So Oppo's Color OS 12 beta rollout has already kicked off for a couple of smartphones at least, and Oppo reckons it'll be bringing Color OS 12 to 110 different models, which frankly is absolutely batch bonkers and shows just how many smartphones Oppo releases on a yearly basis. Certainly keeps us tech spuds busy at least. And unsurprisingly, with that many phones to update to Color OS 12, the actual rollout won't be finished until sometime around summer 2022. So if you do have an Oppo smartphone, perhaps don't hold your breath. But anyway, I've been playing with Color OS 12 here on the excellent Oppo Find X3 Pro for the last few weeks. So here's my kind of early review and also some top tips on some of the best features you'll find packed away in there. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, Oppo is keen to emphasize that it is trying to keep a stock Android vibe with Color OS 12, so pretty much all of the usual elements that we know and love are right there, including the good old apps tray. Although you will actually have to make some adjustments to the home settings in order to get things looking as familiar as possible. So while, for instance, the apps drawer is activated by default, you will have to actually change up what happens when you swipe down on the home screen because it's set to the global search by default. You want to change that to the notifications drawer if you really do want a stock Android vibe. And no, there's no Google Discover feed anywhere in sight, while you'll also have to activate fan favorites like gesture navigation and that dark mode. As usual though, you do have a respectable amount of customization here in Color OS 12, and I love how some of my favorite features like the icon pull down gesture or back in action, and that one is particularly handy if you're dealing with a big old phone like the Find X3 Pro just to help you uh, open up an app if your desktops are a bit crowded. And there's further delight for stubby fingered users such as myself because you can quickly and easily activate a one-handed mode just by dragging down at the bottom edge. This just shunts everything down towards the bottom half of the screen so everything's nice and easy to select. And despite all of Oppo's many protests at Color OS 12 having a stock-ish Android vibe, the company really has gone to town tweaking and fiddling about with that UI. And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining because I really do like the UI here on Color OS 12. It's nice and colorful and bright and vibrant as usual. And the animations have been polished up, so flicking and poking your way through the desktops looks slicker than ever. This includes fresh new 3D icons, which act very much like buttons, pressing in when you poke them and then springing beautifully into life. And some of these UI adjustments are actually designed to improve the accessibility of Color OS 12, which you'll find if you go into System Settings and then go into the Accessibility section. You'll see this is split into several different sections. If you head into Vision, you've got various features in here, including high contrast colors, you've got color inversion as well, and color vision enhancement. With just a couple of quick taps, this can change up the color palette so icons and text are cleanly visible if you happen to be colorblind. And this even handily includes a color vision test so you can properly personalize and get it set up just for you. Now, the wallpaper selection here in Color OS 12 is certainly nothing particularly to write home about. You've got a variety of static images, all of which are a little bit trippy. Definitely getting some prog rock vibes. And you've got some motion papers as well, or live as they are called here. However, as with Android 12, you've also got the option of changing up the system colors to match the wallpaper. To get this feature on the go, what you'll want to do is dive into the settings menu and then up near the top, you've got the personalizations section and in there you'll find colors. You can choose from various different options in here. Otherwise, go for a custom look. And last up, there is the wallpaper color picking option. Basically, just slide the dots to your favorite hues on that wallpaper and then it will use those colors to change up the general desktop themes. So as you can see, we've got uh, all blue icons in the settings menu now. But then if I was to change that up back in the colors menu, now we've got more of an orangey red finish, very bright and vibrant. And that personalization settings menu is always a great place to dive into if you do want to change up and customize the look and feel of ColorOS. So you can customize the wallpaper from in here again. You can play around with the icon design. And the always on display has also been tinkered with for Color OS 12 to a small degree. So you've got various options for displaying the always on display. You can have it scheduled, you can have it shown all day, whatever you fancy. You can also tinker with what information is actually displayed. You've got various different designs you can choose from, including ones that allow you to add your own text and images. And you've also got the Oxygen OS canvas wallpaper as well, or portrait silhouette as it's known in Color OS. And if you're not all fair with this feature, what it allows you to do is upload any photo you like, including one of your glorious mug and then you can just generate a kind of monochrome always on display picture of your very own. And then let me just tweak the colors. That looks rather nice. Yeah, let's get that on the go. And there you go. My misshapen mug has been transformed into a rather stunning always on display. I don't think it's quite done my eyebrows full justice, but it'll do. And soon you'll also be able to create your own emoji, which is basically a crap cartoon version of your facial region, like what you can do on iPhones, but a little bit worse even. And that will be coming in ColorOS 12.1, apparently. 
Now the flex drop feature from ColorOS 11 is now kind of back in action, but it's changed its name to Floating Windows. Once again, you can access this from the smart sidebar like so. And this window can be dragged about on your desktops. It can be resized quickly and easily like so. You can even minimize it by dragging it to the very edges. Although note that you can only have one Floating Window active on top of another app at any given moment. And yeah, this feature can be kind of useful if you're referring to a document while you're messaging or if you're checking out a walkthrough while you're playing a game, something like that. And personally though, I gotta say, I still prefer just skipping between apps with a quick flick at the bottom of the screen like so, I just find it much easier. And Color OS's uh, smart sidebar hasn't really gained any more smart since Color OS 11. You can once again take a screenshot, start a screen recording, fast access your files, all that good stuff. But you do now have the screen translate feature as well. Now obviously you don't need screen translate when you're just browsing a foreign website or whatever because you get the Google Translate option popping up down below automatically. But it's really good if, for instance, you take a picture of a foreign menu that's all completely in a different dialect, you've got no idea what any of it means, and then all of that text will be translated into English before your very mug. It's basically just the translate feature in uh, Google Lens, uh, but it's great to have fast access to it via that sidebar. And apparently behind the scenes Oppo has also been working with a massive team of linguists in order to offer greater localization language support. So now in ColorOS 12 you've got support for over 67 different languages apparently. I only speak the one language and even then I kind of struggle at times so I can't see whether this uh, entire endeavor has been successful or not. You'll have to look elsewhere for that unfortunately. So what else has changed in ColorOS 12? Well you don't get a huge amount of crapware pre-installed on here which is great to see the likes of overlap it's basically the same as it ever was, just giving you access to a variety of peaceful, relaxing sounds to stop you wigging out and losing your shit. You've also got a variety of music and white noise as well, which is particularly good if you've got a small Ben who just won't shut the hell up. And that there phone manager tool has also been spruced up for ColorOS 12. You've got the same optimized feature, which can basically clear, clutter, and sort out any issues that you might have here on your Oppo smartphone. But then the main tool set has been stripped down to privacy, app management, and battery. There's basically fast access shortcuts into the various color OS settings and then the rest of the tools have been shunted away into a separate tab. Got some handy tools in here including the diagnostics, the kid space if you're handing your expensive shiny Oppo smartphone to your sprog you don't want them poking their nose in stuff they shouldn't be. But back into the main section you've now got an improved battery dashboard for one. This gives you plenty of power saving modes that you can play around with, gives you optimization uh, recommendations as well if any apps are draining your juice and you can easily see exactly what has been draining the power here on your smartphone. With access to various other battery settings as well, it is very comprehensive. The privacy and security features have also been given a proper boot up the arse here on Color OS 12. So a lot of the best features that you found packed into Android 12 are also here on Oppo's UI as well, including the ability to completely block camera access and microphone access to all apps on your smartphone. Particularly good if you happen to be in the mafia and about to have a really illegal conversation about naughty things. And this here privacy dashboard right at the top is where you'll want to be diving if you want to see exactly what apps have been accessing what bits of your smartphone. You can toggle the various permissions as well to so make sure that none of your apps have access to stuff that they shouldn't. And that's pretty much it for ColorOS 12, to be honest. Uh, a couple of other little bits, like for instance, the special features menu slightly more neatly arranged than it was before. You've got fast access to a variety of good features, including quite a few that I've already mentioned. And some vanity projects, like the ability to basically smooth out your face when you're on a video call. I haven't been on a lot of video calls in recent times for obvious reasons. I'd say it'd be much better if ColorOS actually came with a feature that automatically muted your mic if it detected you were talking utter bollocks. And Oppo reckons it's also improved the overall general performance of ColorOS from version 12 versus the previous generations, although it's kind of hard to test out on the Oppo Find X3 Pro because it's a bit of a beefcake. Hopefully though, on lesser, more budget-friendly Oppo smartphones, you will find that things are a bit smoother, a bit slicker. And then the only other feature that Oppo mentioned in the Color OS 12 uh, preview was basically the PC Manager feature, which allows you to hook up your smartphone to your laptop quickly and easily, sharing files and sharing apps and all that shenanigans. And that's something we've obviously already seen on the likes of Huawei smartphones with Harmony OS. You can quickly and easily share files with your Huawei MateBook laptops. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see how well it's integrated into Color OS and which uh, laptops exactly will be supported. Blah, shenanigans isn't coming until 2022 anyway, so you'll have to hold your horses or whatever you fancy holding in the meantime. So that in a nutshell is Color OS 12, my early impressions of it and some of the best features that are packed away in there. And as you can see, a fair bit has changed up for it. I do really, really like the overall vibe, even if it isn't, isn't quite as stock Android as Oppo would like you to maybe think. 
But what do you guys reckon? It'd be great to hear your thoughts, your own mini reviews down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, including lots more Oppo unboxings and reviews undoubtedly in 2022. And have yourselves a fine ass rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.